Hi everyone, I'm Marbos here, and this is going to be a video about the most essential Solization 6 mods. Most of them will be UI and the quality of life mods, but there will be a few others that affect the gameplay a little bit, so I list them at the end. So, without further ado, let's get started. And first up is one of the greatest Solization 6 UI mods that has ever been made. Detailed map tax. I can barely imagine playing without it anymore. And uh, this mod will allow you to plan future locations for your cities, for your wonders, for your districts. And uh, most importantly, when you plan out your districts using uh, this mod, it will tell you exactly what the adjacency bonuses are going to be. It's an essential UI mod at this point, in my opinion. And personally, I pretty much always have it enabled by default. Next up, we got another mod I can barely imagine playing without. I probably wouldn't want to play without it anymore. And uh, that's extended policy cards. And uh, it's meant to be used in combination with a better report screen. So I will treat them as a single mod here. But extended policy cards basically tells you what the exact effect of that policy is going to be. So you can better decide whether you want it or not. You don't have to guess what the exact effect would be. Do I need to say more? It's a mod that basically eliminates all the guesswork from policies. Now you know exactly what the effect is going to be. You don't have to guess. And with many of them, you pretty much had to guess. So this has been an amazing quality of life addition. And the, the better report screen mod, which is meant to be used with this one, it adds and improves the report screens. So it improves existing ones, but it also adds some new tabs like city states and also policies. It gives you a lot of useful information. Even if you don't use the new and improved reports, however, you need to have this mod enabled because it's required for better report screen to show effect information. So that's why I'm treating them as kind of the same mod. Either way, I probably wouldn't want to play without these two. Or at the very least, it would be a lot less convenient. So next up, we got the single biggest time saver on this entire list of mods, which is Quick Deals. It's actually insane how much time this mod will save you because it allows you to make deals with the AI at a click of a mouse button. That's it. It shows you how much each AI will pay for a certain resource, and then all you have to do is click accept the deal. You don't have to open the trade screen with each AI separately and check how much each of them will pay you for something. You can just use quick deals. It's actually amazing. This mod will save you so much time. So next up, we got Secret Act's Global Relations Panel. And I actually started using this one fairly recently, but it's a really nice mod that allows you to check all of the AI's relations with each other. And with you. Normally, there's no good way to quickly check what everyone's relations with each other are and what agreements they have with each other. But with this mod, you can see all of that information basically on a single screen. And if you are interested in one specific player, you can hover over that player and you will see only their relations and their agreements. It's a really nice mod that will definitely save you time. So next up is a mod I can't not mention. And uh, this is a mod I've been using for so long that I'm probably assuming some of its features are base CV6 features. And it's Secret Act's simple UI adjustments. Uh, this mod doesn't do anything big or flashy, but it has a lot of small, useful UI features and the quality of life improvements. So for example, you can hover over a city banner and quickly check which tiles are being worked. It changes quite a few tooltips to give you more information and generally more useful information from the tooltips. 
And it also adds things like screenshot mode. Pretty much everything it adds is a very clear improvement. And out of all the mods on my list here, this is the one I've been using the longest, pretty much. Next up, we got another very useful mod, which is Better Trade Screen. Uh, this is also one of those essential UI mods, I would say, because in the base game, uh, the trade management leaves quite a lot to be desired. With this mod, you can not only sort trade routes based on yields, you can multi-sort by holding shift and clicking on sort buttons. It also overhauls the trade overview screen, it adds sort options, it adds filter options, it correctly shows all available trade routes, uh, that was not the case previously. They are also colored based on their origin city, it just makes your life so much easier when managing trade routes. I don't think I would want to play without this mod anymore. Next up, we got the mod that I only just started using it a few days ago, basically, even less than that, but it's certainly going to be a permanent addition to my list. And it's Real Era Tracker. If you're like me and you always had a bit of a problem figuring out what exactly you can still do to get those few missing points for the next golden age, this is the mod for you. It does what it says it does. It basically tells you what you can do for era score. It will show you a list of historic moments you haven't earned yet. So now instead of alt tabbing out to check out the wiki, you can just use this mod. Much more convenient and you get all the information in game. Definitely recommended. So that's the mods that will save you the most time and I would consider them either essential or almost essential. Next up I got a few more smaller mods, which aren't nearly as essential as the ones I listed so far, but they are quite nice. So let's start from a smaller one, which is a better loading screen, and it does what it says it does. It shows you more complete information about the solicitation you are about to be playing while the game is loading because by default you don't get all the information, with this mod you do. So it's nice to have, to get a good reminder about everything your sieve is able to do. Next up we got extended diplomacy ribbon. Uh, this is also quite a nice UI mod and it basically gives you a more complete information about each AI when you hover over them on the diplomacy ribbon. It tells you, for example, exactly how much science per turn they are making, how much culture per turn they are making, how many technologies they have, and this is all information available elsewhere. It's just that with this mod you can just get it when hovering over that sieve, instead of going, for example, to the victory screens and checking how many tags they got over there. It will certainly save you quite a lot of time. So that's it as far as UI mods go. Next up we got a few visual mods and some map scripts. And the first up is Vegetation Variety Standalone. So this is a mod that changes forests and rainforests. Because by default there's some really weird spacing, which I always thought looks a little bit bizarre. So this mod makes forests and rainforests much denser and it also gives them a unique look based on terrain, so you can easily identify what's underneath. These are all entirely cosmetic changes, nothing else is impacted in any way. It just makes it look better, at least in my opinion. There is also a version of this mod uh, that makes everything look more like in Solization 5. So uh, that's the other alternative. This one is a standalone version, just with the vegetation changes. Next up we got another visual mode, which is Heal Your Hills, which again does exactly what it promises. It changes the height map of hills to make them look more like actual hills. Because in the base game, by default, it's sometimes kind of hard to tell which tile is a hill style and which tile is not. 
I know it's not just me. <laughs> so this mod helps you solve that problem. Hills are way, way more obvious with this. I quite like it personally. Again, these changes are purely visual, it does not affect anything, it just makes it look a bit different. So next up, we got two of my favorite map mods that I've ever played. First, alternate cartography. So this is a mod that includes several map scripts, and all of them are very interesting and very creative, and very, very different from all of the default maps that are included in the game. It's also still being updated. It just got some new maps added a few days ago when I'm recording this video. It's a little bit hard to describe some of the maps that are included, but if you are looking for interesting map scripts to use, I highly recommend checking out this mod. I'm pretty sure you will not regret it. Next up, we got the second map mod, which is God Lakes. Uh, the name is a little bit misleading there. This is an incredibly versatile map script uh, with insane amount of customizability. And uh, if you want to create some truly insane maps, because maybe you're bored with anything that looks even remotely normal, uh, this map script can deliver and then some. There are so many options to play with in here that I'm considering making a whole separate video just covering this mod alone. This mod can create some truly insane maps that will make you question your sanity. But if that sounds fun, I would highly recommend at least checking this out. It's pretty much the most insane map script I have ever seen. Not just in Civ 6, but in any Civ ever. It's going to be pretty damn hard to top this. And this is not an exaggeration, trust me, it's not. So the last two mods are the only mods on this list that actually affect the gameplay a little bit. And the first one is Socritax Resources. It's a mod that does exactly what it says it does. It adds a few extra luxury resources and bonus resources to the game. So currently it includes resources such as cheese, Camels, Obsidian, Gold Luxury, Bison, and Shark. They are all quite well balanced, and they make the game a bit more interesting and diverse in terms of resources. So if you like the sound of that, I would definitely recommend it. And finally, we got another mod that affects the gameplay, Sukritax Oceans, which functions as a brand new game mode, Similar to, let's say, Secret Societies, you have to enable it on the game mode list before you start the game. And uh, it adds a few new sea-based resources, and it also adds a new terrain feature uh, called Kelp Forest, which is rich in food, but it slows down your movement. You need two movement points to pass through it. It also changes the way fisheries work in the game. So with this mod enabled, the fishery tile cannot be worked, but instead, fishing boats adjacent to one or more fisheries will yield plus two food and another plus one production while Liang is in the city. And also plus one housing. So what it basically means is that you don't have to spam fisheries on every single tile. Instead, you just need a few well-placed fisheries that will improve tiles next to them. And the mod also includes a few changes to how water parks work, which means you can get an amenity bonus from adjacent kelp forests, you can get some more science from reefs and kelp forests if you have an aquarium, and the full list is available on the mod page on Steam Workshop. And speaking of which, there will be a link to an entire collection which includes every single mod I just listed in this video, and you can find it in the description below, as well as in my pinned comment. I do hope you enjoyed this list, so leave a like if you did, I would definitely appreciate it, and subscribe if you haven't, for more future videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.